Welcome back. My guest today is Mr. Tim Cox, who is the founder of GO. It's an acronym for Get Out of Our House, and he has written a book, Revolution, A New Plan for Selecting Representatives. Prior to the break, um, Tim, we were talking about ed the educational process and the survey or questionnaire that you have people uh, fill out. And in each of these questions, you ask if they are for or against something. And one of the things I noticed as I read through that is sometimes you would, I'd tend to feel an emotional response to it, and then I think more about it. And what I learned as I read it, some of them were rights that we were talking about, but some were also entitlements. And it seems like the line between those two often gets blurred. Yeah, and I think many people don't even catch the difference until they step back and think about them. All right, so most of the questions in the survey, there's usually a meaning and almost an underlying meaning, right, mm. to your point. So we might ask, would you amend the Constitution to whatever, right? You might be for or against the whatever part, but you might be against the question because you don't want to amend the Constitution, right? We might ask, uh, are you for or against allowing the sale of all legal goods over the Internet? Well, your first reaction might be, well, of course, that'll allow the sale of all goods over the Internet. But the underlying part is, is there really a right for the government to be involved in, the, in that at all? Right. right. And so you could ask questions about health care or marriage or education or what have you uh, that have very similar connotations, right? There's this kind of the question as it's written, but then there's that underlying, right? And as you call out many times, is it a right or an entitlement, mm -hmm. right? And what we want is we want people across all of America to think through these. Right, study the questions, talk about them with your peers, and let's get to an uh, intelligent debate on these things. Right? Should prisoners have rights in the prison you know, to unbridled health care, right? mm -hmm. or should they just be given minimal care? Right? You think through these, there's that, is it a right, is it an entitlement, where to go? So, so I think uh, almost every one of the questions can kind of be split that way. But let's talk about, in fact, that particular um, question, because on that, on that question, I believe the question was on, on my form was, are you for or against limiting the medical attention that a prisoner on death row is getting to just keep him comfortable or to maintaining his health if he's got a broken bone or an infection? And I put that I was against it. Now, some in the group may have thought that I put I was against it because I thought they shouldn't, it shouldn't be limited. But, and so I, as I explained it, I was concerned that they probably thought I had no compassion whatsoever. I was against it, not, not because I wanted anybody to suffer, but because I didn't think that, that the government should be paying for his medical attention. And when I say government, I explained that if your wife or your children had been murdered, I didn't believe that you should have to pay for that murderer's medical attention. Um, you're already paying for his food and his clothing and his shelter, and then the ins added insult that you're now paying for medical attention for somebody that murdered your loved ones. Then that brought up the question from someone in the group, well, then who should pay for it? And I said, let his loved ones, his family, his friends, uh, people who light candles, who believe he has rights and don't remember the names of the victims, let them. There are groups of people that will pay for that. Well, different people responded differently to that, as you can imagine, but I did see that as more of an entitlement. And so it seems to me that your survey or your questionnaire goes beyond just asking questions. It's an educational tool. It, it will. If, if you go to the website, thego.com, and take this questionnaire, what you'll find is you'll have a simple response to many of them, some of them you'll say, well, I don't understand, so now you've got to go research and get mm -hmm. educated. Some of them you'll say, well, I can't answer, I don't have enough information, or it's too gray. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to do is get the people to think through the issues. So one of my favorite ones is the would you vote for or against the fair tax? Well, there's probably 25% of the people that are participating have no clue what the fair tax is. And at the end of the day, I don't so much care how you're going to vote on that issue, but I want you to know what it is so you can discuss it intelligently with your peers and is the fair tax right, or is the flat tax right, or is you know progressive? You figure it out. We're not saying what the answer should be, but let's stimulate some debate. I think most of us have been raised not to talk about religion and mm -hmm. politics, and I think that is so wrong. Mm -hmm. Like those are probably the two most important things we should talk about. We just need to do it in a civil way. And the process that you participated in today is an exceptionally civil way 
to have those discussions with people of every you know, political leaning and go through and listen and learn about other viewpoints. Uh, and I think that alone is a tremendous victory if we can get everybody just to read and answer those questions. One of the questions on your survey had to do with would we be for or against religion being taught in the school as an elective. And there was a discussion about that too. Some people thinking, oh well, it's about time that religion be allowed to be discussed. Others who are concerned, which religion are you talking about? And then others who are concerned, well, who chooses what, what religion will be taught? Mm -hmm. and, and others who said, well, isn't that the family's responsibility? So there was a lot of discussion on yeah, that. Yeah, and, and, and think about where this goes, right? We're not trying to get anybody to answer a certain way, but we want people that can articulate their position after they put it in writing and agree to be mm -hmm. held accountable to that, uh, that will go to Washington and represent that position. So if you sit down and you look at all of these answers collectively, Nobody's going to agree on every one of them, mm -hmm. but what you're going to find is people that they have a position, it's reasonably direct for the members of their district, and they can bubble up. In the suburbs of Dallas, they might want to choose to allow the teaching of religion as an elective in a public school, and they might choose every religion. Right? In California, they might say, no way. Well, that's up to states' rights. Right? To me, that's kind of what the Tenth Amendment Tenth is Amendment. about. Mm -hmm. right? So let's let every district decide, and you know what? We don't need to have just two answers. We don't need just a red answer and a blue answer. Republican and Democrat, I think, are clearly bad labels. Anytime you try to take something this diverse, 300 million people, and lump them all into two, two groups, right, mm -hmm. you're fundamentally flawed. Think, think about this part. If you have just two issues, any two issues, there's actually four answers. You could be t for both of them, and you could be against both of them, or you could be for A and against B, Right, or against A and for B, so there's four answers. In our two-party system, you have to be for both or against both. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as you add a third question, now there's eight possibilities, and a fourth, there's 16. So there's trillions of possibilities, and what the two parties have done is said, you have to be with us on every single issue and be blue, or every single issue and be red. Well, and, and the interesting wrong. thing there that um, um, you also find that sometimes people in the Republican Party or the people in the Democrat Party may not even support all the things in their platform. So it gets very involved, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and you saw that today, right? We asked just 20 questions and there was nobody, I think actually there were two people that agreed, mm -hmm. I, I need to go back and check on that, right? But there were over 100 people and nobody agrees on these 20 issues, right? You got to go through it issue by issue, right, and figure out, and then the questions are so gray. Right? It's not just do you believe in abortion, mm -hmm. right? but do you believe in abortion uh, if there's rape or incest? Right? Is the birth or control funded by the government? Funded by, right? There's so many shades of gray on there. There's not just two answers, and the answers are going to be different in each and every district. I think if anything, right, we need to go back and look, should you really have one person representing 660,000 people? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that there creates a problem of itself. Um, but, but the broader issue is we need a new process for selecting representatives. We need people to discuss issues, debate issues, and let citizens tr choose a representative. What we don't need is one person told how to vote by a party, right, funded by special interests, is gonna make sure every piece of legislation steers millions of dollars of earmarks back to them so they can get refunded, right, and who get up there and worry about their own political career. When we come back from the break, we're gonna talk some more about the accountability aspect. I'm Elizabeth Allen Hodge. The program is FY Idaho. <laughs> 